Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Thinking in Energy, Level 6, Conservation of Energy. When you're investigating energy, it's really important to define the system that you are investigating. Remember, the object that represents energy is going to be this red sphere because it changes, and, and that's what energy does. It produces change or causes change in systems. In this video, we're not just talking about energy, but we're going to be talking about the conservation of energy, this idea that energy can be neither created nor destroyed, and knowing that, we can start to see where energy actually moves in and within a system. After watching this video, you should be able to check conserved energy in objects like this Stirling engine or even in a uh, complex ecosystem looking at energy in the trophic levels. I'm going to start by showing you my thinking as we look at energy conservation in a wind-up dog. And then you'll have a chance to do the same thing as we look at a wind-up uh, radio powered or oh, a hand cranked radio light. So I'm going to start by cleaning it up and then we'll get started. So the system that we're going to use to start is this cute little wind up dog. I'm going to wind it up and then we're going to watch what happens to the dog over time. So it's not making any noise at this point. I'll just let it go. All right. So the system in this case is going to be the wind up jumping dog. Now for us to really understand this, we have to understand a little bit of how this jumping dog works. And so I took apart another uh, toy that does the same kind of uh, behavior. So this one was a frog. And when I took it apart, what I found looking inside it is that there was a spring. So there's a spring on the inside it must store some of that energy. And there's also probably another spring or a coil that's inside this little wind-up mechanism as well. So knowing that that is how the dog works, the first thing I want to do when we're looking at conservation of energy is I want to choose a couple of times through time. So we want to see what's happening over time to the jumping dog. So I'm going to start with time zero when we've just got a dog before it's wound up. So I'm going to start with a dog that's resting. So we've got a resting dog before I wind it up. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wind up the dog. So this would be the dog in a wound up state. You can see it's not making any noise, but it's ready to go. So that's going to be our second thing we're going to look at. So now you can see that eventually that dog starts jumping and eventually it's back to its initial state. So we're just going to look at these three different po points in time. We've got the resting dog, we've got the wound up dog, and then we've got the resting dog again at the end. So the next step for me to do is start thinking about energy. Where is the energy in a resting dog? And so in this case I would say there's no energy in a resting dog. There's nothing that's going to cause it to change. So I'm not going to list anything underneath that. But I think there is a lot of energy in the wound up dog. And so let me just list that energy down below. So the energy in the wound up dog, I'm just representing it with these little blocks and it just says spring on each one. And so what we've got here is four units of spring energy. In other words, that energy is somehow stored in this spring that is inside the dog. And so where does that energy come from? So did that energy like start in the dog? I would say no. Like where does that energy come from? I'm winding the dog. And as I'm winding the dog, what I'm doing is I'm adding energy. So let me represent that on here. So I'm saying that energy is being added to the resting dog and it eventually ends up in the wound up dog. And so I'm going to represent that with a red arrow that goes like that. And so where is that energy coming from? Every time I wind the dog a little bit more, I'm adding a little bit more of this motion energy. Where does that energy become? That energy eventually becomes spring energy that's found inside the dog. What I'm not showing is energy going from the resting dog to the wound up dog. Remember, it's coming into the system. That's why it's really important that we define what the system is. Now let's see what happens over here. So when it's done, what we've got is a wound up dog and then as we let it go where is that energy going well you can hear some of that energy i'm 
showing on the model now is that there's movement. The dog is jumping, and so as it's doing that, that motion energy, and more importantly, that sound energy is leaving the dog. And so what are we left with at the end? We have a dog who is a resting dog. So it's lost all that energy, and it really is where it was kind of at the beginning. Now, since we're talking about conservation of energy, that means that the units of energy that we have come in have to equal the units of energy that go out of the system. And so let's say I don't wind it up as much. So let's say I wind it only a couple of times. It's still able to jump, but it's not gonna keep jumping as long. And so how could I update my model to show that? I could say, in this case, there's only two units of motion that are being added into the wound up dog. So what do I get here since energy is conserved? I only have two units of spring energy that are stored in the dog. And then what's next? I am giving off that energy as motion and sound. A lot of that eventually becomes heat in the surroundings, but I've lost that energy. And it's two units, two units, two units because energy can't be created can't be destroyed and so it has to be conserved through in the system. So that's looking at conservation of energy just using a simple model like this. I'm gonna clean it up and then I'm gonna give you a different phenomena that you could dig into. Okay, for this next example, what I have here is a hand cranked battery light. And so what I'm gonna do is define the system. In this case, what we've got is a hand cranked radio light and it has a battery that's built in on the inside. Now when I try to turn on the light right now or I try to turn on the radio, nothing's happening. And so this is it in, with a dead battery. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start to charge it by turning this crank. And after doing that, I've added energy into the system so we could turn on the light. We could turn on the radio. And it even has an alarm. Okay, so let me turn that off for a second. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna define what are the different points in time. And then I'm gonna have you try to figure out what's the energy and where's the energy flowing. Okay, so I've just chosen arbitrarily these four different points. We've got a radio with a dead battery. Then I charge it, so by winding up this crank, I'm able to charge the battery. Then I let it play for a little while, and then I just turn it off, turn off the, the radio and the light. It's got some battery left, and then eventually turn it on again, and it eventually becomes a dead battery. And so what I want you to try to do is use the thinking slides down below, so pause the video, and then come back and try to show me what is the energy at each one of these states, and how is energy moving? How does energy flow into the system, within the system? Then unpause the video, come back, and we'll see how our thinking compares. Okay, so the first thing that I would do is I would start thinking about what is the energy at every state along the way. So if we're thinking of a radio that's dead, that's maybe the easiest one to start. I'm going to say that there's not any energy in there. But now as I crank it, we're going to add some energy to it. So let me write that out. Okay, so I'm saying that the, the radio that has a charge battery, I gave that four units. I'm calling it chemical energy. It doesn't really matter what you call this. You could call this battery energy. Uh, where does that energy come from? It comes from the motion. And so as I turn this crank, that motion of my hand is being converted into that chemical energy that's stored in the battery. So a way for me to show that transfer of energy would be just an arrow that goes in this direction. So that energy is coming in from my hand into the system. 
Now let's look at the next one. So we're gonna let it play for a little while and then we're gonna turn off the battery. It still has a little bit of energy left in it. So let me start there. So I'm saying that it has two units of chemical energy after it's played for a while. Um, where does that energy go? Since we have four units here and we only have two units here, we have to account for those two other units that are here. And let me write that out. So with these arrows, I'm showing that that chemical energy that we had before is transferred into, it's still there, it didn't go anywhere. So it's within the system is what I'm trying to show with that arrow. But we're losing some of that energy into the surroundings and we're losing that as light and sound energy. If we think at the end, now we've got a radio with a dead battery. Well, what happened there? There can't be any of this chemical energy that's moved into the last phase. And so I would say something like this. So that chemical energy now has been converted into light and sound energy that are leaving the system and they're going into the surroundings. And so on this model, you can think of everything horizontally is within the system. And just this red area on the outside is um, like losing energy into the surroundings is a way to think about that or adding energy through motion into the system. I'm trying to show chemical energy stored in it here. So that's a way to think about conservation of energy. Energy is what makes this change. And so now that we know that energy has to be conserved, we can start tracking where it's actually going. Um, for me, the easiest thing to do is just to decide on sets in time, like at what time are we going to look at it and then start to figure out what's the energy and where does it go. So now that you've done this, I would encourage you to practice some more. There are some thinking slides below. You could look at energy transfer in something like a Stirling engine, or you could look at uh, what's going on in a living system as we look at energy in the trophic levels in a forest ecosystem from plants all the way to that secondary predator. So that's thinking in energy. This is level six, conservation of energy and I hope that was helpful.